Hello everyone, welcome to Dentomedia YouTube channel. In this video, you will get complete lecture on rationale of endodontic treatment. Let's get started. The term rationale can be defined as the fundamental reason or the rational basis for a procedure. The rationale for endodontic therapy is based on the belief that a natural tooth functions more efficiently and comfortably than a bridge, partial denture, or an implant tooth. Endodontic pathology is mainly caused by injury to the tooth which can be, physical, chemical, bacterial. These injury results in reversible or irreversible changes in the pulp and pararadicular tissues. It depends upon the intensity, duration, and pathogenicity of injury and host defense. It results in changes mediated by a series of inflammatory and immunological reactions. All these reactions take place to eliminate the irritant and repair any damage. However, certain conditions are beyond the reparative ability of the body and need to be treated endodontically to aid the survival of tooth. Rationale of endodontic therapy is complete debridement of root canal system followed by three-dimensional obturation, theories of spread of infection, focal infection. It is localized or general infection caused by the dissemination of microorganisms or toxic products from a focus of infection. Focus of infection, this refers to a circumscribed area of tissue, which is infected with exogenous pathogenic microorganisms and is usually located near a mucous or cutaneous surface. Theory related to focal infection William Hunter first suggested that oral microorganisms and their products involved in number of systemic diseases, are not always of infectious origin. In year 1940, Rayman and Havens criticized the theory of focal infection with their recent findings, mechanism of focal infection, two most accepted mechanisms. Metastasis of microorganisms from infected focus by either hematogenous or lymphogenous spread, carrying of toxins or toxic byproducts through bloodstream and lymphatic channel to site where they may initiate a hypersensitive reaction in tissues, for example, in scarlet fever, erythrogenic toxin liberated by infected streptococci is responsible for cutaneous features of this disease, oral foci of infection, possible sources of infection. In oral cavity which later on may set up distant metastasis are, Infected periapical lesions such as, periapical granuloma, periapical abscess, periapical cyst, teeth with infected root canals. Periodontal diseases with special reference to tooth extraction. Culprit of endodontic pathology, many studies have shown that root canal infections are multibacterial in nature, in 1965. Kakehashi described the importance of microorganisms for the development of pulpal and periapical pathologies, portals for entry of microorganisms, microorganisms may gain entry into pulp through several routes. Most common portal of entrance for microorganisms to dental pulp is dental caries, these routes are, open cavity, dentinal tubules, periodontal ligament or gingival sulcus, anachoresis, faulty restoration, Inflammation, inflammation is defined as the local response of living mammalian tissue to injury due to any agent, agents that cause inflammation, physical, cold, heat, mechanical. Trauma or radiation, chemical, organic and inorganic poisons, infective, bacteria, viruses, and their toxins, immunological, antigen antibody cell mediated reactions, signs of inflammation. The Roman writer Celsus in 1st century AD gave four cardinal signs of inflammation. Ruber, redness. Tumor, swelling, color, hair, dolor, pain. Verkov later added the fifth sign function lacia, loss of function. Inflammation is of two types, acute inflammation dominated by polymorphonuclear lymphocytes, PMNLs, and few macrophages. Chronic inflammation dominated by lymphocytes, macrophages, and plasma cells. The balance between the host defense and microbial factor determines the formation of lesion, tissue changes following inflammation, degenerative changes in the pulp can be, fibrous, resorptive, calcific, continuous degeneration of the tissue results in necrosis. Suppuration is another form of degeneration which is due to injury to polymorphonuclear cells. 
It causes release of proteolytic enzymes with resulting liquefaction of dead tissues thus leading to formation of pus or suppuration, three requisites which are necessary for suppuration. Tissue necrosis, polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Digestion of the necrotic material by proteolytic enzymes released by injured polymorphonuclear cells. Clinical significance, an abscess can result even in absence of microorganisms because of chemical or physical irritation. It results in formation of sterile abscess. Proliferative changes, the irritant may be strong enough to produce degeneration or destruction, whereas at the periphery, the irritant may be mild enough to stimulate proliferation. The principal cells are, fibroblasts, which lay down cellular fibrous tissues. In some cases collagen fibers may be substituted by a dense acellular tissue. In either case it results in formation of fibrous tissue, inflammatory cells, neutrophils, eosinophils, lymphocytes, osteoclasts, epithelial cells, macrophages. Inflammatory response to periapical lesion, nonspecific mediators of periradicular lesions can be classified into following types, cell-derived mediators, plasma-derived mediators, extracellular matrix-derived mediators, effector molecules, antibodies, specific mediators of immune reactions, these are produced by plasma cells and are of two types, polyclonal antibodies, are nonspecific like IgE mediated reactions which interact with antigen resulting in release of certain chemical mediators like histamine or serotonin. Monoclonal antibodies like IgG and IgM, interact with the bacteria and its byproducts to form antigen antibody complexes that bind to the platelets resulting in release vasoactive amines thus increasing the vascular permeability and chemotaxis of PMNs the monoclonal antibodies exhibit antimicrobial effect in acute abscess the complex enters the systemic circulation the concentration of these complexes return to normal levels after endodontic treatment in chronic lesions the AGIB complexes are confined within the lesion and do not enter into the systemic circulation. The response of periapical-slash-host tissue is controlled by cells, molecular mediators, nonspecific mediators of inflammation, and antibodies, specific mediators of inflammation. Role of immunity in endodontics, immunity is of two types. Innate immunity Acquired slash adaptive immunity innate immunity. It is responsible for the initial nonspecific reactions. These are the cells providing innate immunity, too. Acquired slash adaptive immunity. It involves release of specific receptor molecules by lymphocytes which recognize and bind to foreign antigens. Adaptive immunity is provided by T lymphocytes that release T cell antigen receptors. B lymphocytes that release B cell antigen receptors or immunoglobulins. Endodontic implications, pathogenesis of apical periodontitis as explained by Fish. Fish described the reaction of the periradicular tissues to bacterial products, noxious products of tissue necrosis, and antigenic agents from the root canal. Fish in 1939 theorized that the zones of infection are not an infection by themselves but the reaction of the body to infection. Thus he concluded that the removal of this nidus of infection will result in resolution of infection. Four well-defined zones of reaction were found during the experiment. Zone of infection or necrosis. Zone of contamination, round cell infiltrate lymphocytes. Zone of irritation histiocytes and osteoclasts. Zone of stimulation, fibroblasts, capillary buds and osteoblasts. Zone of infection, infection was confined to the center of the lesion. This zone is characterized by polymorphonuclear leukocytes and microorganisms along with the necrotic cells and destructive components released from phagocytes. Zone of contamination. Area of cellular destruction. This zone was not invaded by bacteria, but the destruction was from toxins discharged from the microorganisms in the central zone. This zone is characterized by round cell infiltration, 
osteocyte necrosis and empty lacunae. Lymphocytes were prevalent everywhere. Zone of irritation, Fish observed evidence of irritation further away from the central lesion as the toxins became more diluted. This is characterized by macrophages histocytes and osteoclasts. The degradation of collagen framework by phagocytic cells and macrophages was observed while osteoclasts attacked the bone tissue. The histologic picture is much like preparatory to repair. Zone of stimulation, Fish noted that, at the periphery, the toxin was mild enough to act as stimulant. This zone is characterized by fibroblasts and osteoblasts. In response to this stimulatory irritant, fibroblasts result in secretion of collagen fibers, which acted both as wall of defense around the zone of irritation and as a scaffolding on which the osteoblasts synthesize new bone. The knowledge gained in fish study can be applied for better understanding of reaction of periradicular tissues to a non-vital tooth. The metabolic byproducts of these microorganisms or the toxic products of tissue necrosis may also get diffused to the periradicular tissues. As the microorganisms enter in the periradicular area, they are destroyed by the polymorphonuclear leukocytes. But if microorganisms are highly virulent, they overpower the defensive mechanism and result in development of periradicular lesion. The toxic byproducts of the microorganisms and the necrotic pulp in the root canal are irritating and destructive to the periradicular tissues. These irritants, along with proteolytic enzymes, released by the dead polymorphonuclear leukocytes, result in the formation of chronic abscess, granuloma, sclerotic bone, and then cyst. Kronfeld's Mountain Pass theory, Kronfeld explained that the granuloma does not provide a favorable environment for the survival of the bacteria, Zone A, he compared the bacteria in the infected root canal with the invaders entrenched behind high end. In accessible mountains, the foramina serving as mountain passes. Zone B, the exudative and granulomatous, proliferative, Tissue of the granuloma represents a mobilized army defending the plains, periapex, from the invaders, bacteria. When a few invaders enter the plain through the mountain pass, they are destroyed by the defenders, leukocytes. A mass attack of invaders results in a major battle, analogous to acute inflammation. Zone C, only complete. Elimination of the invaders from their mountainous entrenchment will eliminate the need for a defense forces in the plains. Once this is accomplished, the defending army of leukocytes withdraws, the local destruction created by the battle is repaired, granulation tissue, and the environment returns to its normal pattern. This explains the rationale for the non-surgical endodontic treatment for teeth with periapical infection. The complete elimination of pathogenic irritants from the canal followed by the three-dimensional fluid impervious obturation will result in complete healing of periapical area. Rationale of endodontic therapy The rationale of RCT relies on the fact that the non-vital pulp, being ovascular, has no defense mechanisms, the damaged tissue within the root canal undergoes autolysis and the resulting breakdown products will diffuse into the surrounding tissues and cause periapical irritation associated with the portals of exit even in the absence of bacterial contamination. It is essential therefore, that endodontic therapy must seal the root canal system three-dimensionally so as to prevent tissue fluids from percolating in the root canal and toxic byproducts from both necrotic tissue and microorganisms regressing into the periradicular tissues. Endodontic therapy includes, non-surgical endodontic treatment, surgical endodontic treatment, we hoped you liked our video, please subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon to get latest video. Thank you for watching.